So we're going to do a video regarding cycle safety and uh, how difficult it is to be seen uh, by heavy or large goods or large vehicles uh, while you're cycling. Uh, it's called Exchanging Places and uh, we're going to speak to one of the officers now. Up, isn't that's, it? That's the thing. Oh, hey, so sorry, what's your name, buddy? Hi, Adam. Nice to meet you, everyone. Nice to meet you. <laughs> How you doing, Adam? Um, so, Adam, uh, talk to us about exchanging places, okay. I believe it's called. So, we're all from the Cycle Safety Team, and this program where we use the Arctic Lorry is called Exchanging Places. The whole program is designed about what you can't see. Okay, so, um, so we're going to focus on blind spots down the near side or the left hand side of the vehicle, and also out the front as well. Okay, so. Um, we'll go through a few things about modern truck driving on the roads of London, but you can see my colleague hopefully in the uh, side mirrors there. Yeah, I can see them, yeah. Okay, so just going through a modern truck on the roads of London, same mirrors on the near side or left hand side and the right hand side. Oh, let's close this one up. That's what a car has. Right. Stand mirror up the top and then right angle on the bottom. By law, any large vehicle must have this side mirror pointing down so the driver can see down the side there, but it must also have the forward mirror pointing down the front as well. Right, I can see you've got the mat out the front as well, that's that the one? demonstrating yep. what they can actually see. Yep, so that's looking at the, the blind spot areas in particular, and uh, later on when we position the bike, you'll be able to see where's the best position to be. Um, just to point out as well, if this had an Arctic or had a trailer on it as well, any gaps between wheels must have a, a horizontal bars now by law. Some uh, trucks are actually getting cameras put on the outside of the vehicles. This one doesn't have them. Not required by law, but obviously the driver would have a screen in here to look at as well. Right. Some are getting glass panels put in the uh, driver's side door as well, just to aid with the visibility. Okay, so you can see my colleague in the side mirror there. So when I give her the thumbs up, she's going to move to another position. So we're going to look at when she does, or when she if disappears from view. Yeah, she's gone from the big mirror okay, and the bottom so one. So again, from start to finish, how, how long did that take for it to disappear? Oh, seconds. Okay, so you can imagine a cyclist going at sort of normal speed past a, a large vehicle like this. Driver might look in the near side mirrors, not see a cyclist, look off to his offside, still not see a cyclist, look back here, yep. and in that time they've gone through the field of vision. Okay, so whereabouts is the cyclist now in relation to us? I have no idea actually, okay. even just watching now, talking to you, I've completely lost where they've okay. gone. Okay, let's have a quick look and see where she is. Okay, there she is. The lovely Natasha. Hello. Okay, so she's about two metres away and this represents her being in the next lane of traffic. So when we're specifically looking at this vehicle being in a traffic light and her being over there, if this truck had a trailer on it, it would need all of that space to turn left. Yeah. So ideally, even being in the next lane, you're quite a distance away, not a safe position to be in in relation. If this truck suddenly decided to turn left, then it would never know where you were. Okay, so the, now my colleague's just moved into another position now. Represents her being, you'll be able to see her in this mirror here. That's right. Must be down here. Represents her being in the cycle lane. Um, this is pretty much number one position for the number of deaths and serious injuries we have in relation to cyclists and large vehicles. And as positioning goes, this is a definite no no position to be in. Okay, she's just going to move to a slightly another different position now. You might be able to see her on the, uh, the forward mirror now. Okay. Yeah. Some cyclists still represented being in a cycle lane. Some cyclists are putting themselves just slightly forward of the truck, feeling that they're a bit safer. But again, being in that position there, still difficult for the driver to see, and it's no better than being here. So another position to avoid. Okay, can move to the next position now. Okay, we might have to crane down over the uh, dashboard here. Okay, so she's immediately in front of the truck now. So, but this position is actually worse for pedestrians and cyclists. It's uh, cyclists and traffic lights thinking that they'll just quickly nip across before the lights change. Um, and again, truck drivers never going to see them. Not many cyclists put themselves here in this position, which is a good thing. But ideally, another position to avoid. Okay, so the last position she's going to move into. Now, my colleague, this represents her being at the very front of those advanced stop line or the cycle boxes. And ideally, as a cyclist, this is where we want the cyclists to be at traffic lights. Well out in front. And when they're in that position, we'd always want the cyclists to look around and make eye contact with the driver. So that you know that he knows you're there. 
all about making yourself as visible as you can. Now ideally, you might be cycling and getting yourself to that position on the streets of London. London being the way it is, you might have other cyclists in it, mopeds, other vehicles blocking the cycle box. And ideally, still getting yourself as far forward as you can to give yourself the best the driver the best visibility view. And the whole point of this program is we want the cyclists to be thinking a good 10 to 20 metres as they're approaching a large vehicle where there's enough time to get that distance. And if, we, if you're not sure of the junction or um, when the lights are going to change, it's always best to stay behind the vehicle until the lights change and then move off as normal. If you know that those lights are going to stay red for a good 20, 30, 40 seconds, and they've only just changed red, by all means get yourself up there. And the same thing, same philosophy that we tell everyone for this program, when we're not doing this is changing places program, all we do are the cycle patrols around areas of London. Same thing if we know the junction well, and same situation, and we know the lights are going to stay red for a long time, we get ourselves up there, or we stay behind. So it's all about looking after yourself and personal safety. Excellent. Adam, thanks very much go. for that information. That's really helpful. No worries. All the best.